Hello everyone, welcome back to Game Brigade. My name is Brian and today we're going to be doing a video sponsored by Triple Meeple with an unboxing of Disrupt. Now this game is going to be coming to you on Kickstarter here later this month and they have asked me to do an unboxing video as well as my first impressions overview review for this title. So if you are looking for more information about this game, uh, stay tuned for my overview impressions. But I'm curious to see what this game looks like and its components. See, Disrupt is a game where you are gonna be taking on the role of an entrepreneur of some sort. You can have angel investors, BPOs, um, uh, wow, there's a whole list of them. You have the startup and the market leader. I gotta remember the four. Because this game is an asymmetrical game, which means each player has a completely different type of rules that they're playing to, the strategy that they're trying to form to win the game. So I was curious how this economy uh, Euro worker placement works with completely different separate powers for each player. So that's what we're taking a look here at Disrupt. So let's go ahead and open it up. And right off the bat, as, as you can see, very, very uh, white box. So we're curious to see what the inside of it looks like. I would also consider this like a behind the scenes look at what it's like to get a prototype copy. This is a prototype for Disrupt. And I think it's always fun when you are um, new to getting a prototype to see what they kind of look like. For example, uh, you get these uh, random papers in here. So let's throw it up. So obviously not what you normally used to when you see a board game. Now, according to the rule book, there will be a full insert for this during the production phase. But right now it looks like we have some different types of components for us to look at. Uh, we've got, and we'll take a closer look at some of these so you can get some details. Uh, but we have some resources, uh, some different types of meeples. In fact, you know what, while we're doing this, I think it's smart to, let's just set up that close camera uh, and we can just have it going. Let's hope I don't drop it because I set the tripod up wrong. And let's get this filming right down here. Okay, so let's just get that going. Because I feel like we're gonna need to see some of these things closer up sooner rather than later. Here we have, looks like a bunch of our cards. We'll take a look at that. Uh, some random uh, cubes. Um, so these are, this is, these are cardboard chits, uh, board tube, meeple book, um, card, card flick. So it looks like board game uh, referenced uh, businesses that we're gonna be playing with. And some similar things we'll take, I believe from when I was looking at the rule book, uh, these are some of the asymmetrical powers, but we'll take a look at that. But here we have the board. So let's go ahead and get that board out. Let's put the box down there and see what this, wow. Let's see what this board looks like. So right off the bat, the first thing is it is sideways. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I dented my board. Stupid close-up camera. Well, that's what it's like when we're doing it live. This is this is what it's like. So, yeah, that sucks, I dented the board. This is very dark, comparatively to the box. Like, when you're looking at this, do not do it again, Brian. Looking at this and then looking down here, it is such a stark difference. Uh, so what do we have here? So up here, it looks like we're gonna have the cards that we're gonna be playing. Um, uh, down here, uh, these are the worker placement locations. I would have to reference the rule book to know exactly what these do, but I do know that they talked about, one of the things I read in the rule book is that when you send your workers out, uh, you send it to the top location and it'll actually do all the locate, like do everything in that column, and then you'll sit at the bottom. So like the next person would come down and do that and maybe stop above you because they can't go down further. So it's interesting that you will hit all four. Now I'm not positive that's the rule. I have to read the rule book fully and the rule book was sent to me on my phone. So I have to, I always think it's more difficult to read rule books on phones. What do you guys think? Is Are you okay with digital rule books or do you prefer a in hand paper rule book? So right off the bat, we have our workers. Let's take a look at what these guys look like. So this is uh, the angel investor, I believe. Let's see, let's have the, uh, so this is the angel investor. The white meeple color is the angel investor. So we have three of those. And there is a 
token here that references them. And I believe that would go in this location right here based on something. Again, I, the rules, I've read the rules very briefly. Um, and just when I was, you know, they asked me to cover this game, I wanted to make sure it was a game that potentially interested me. So I read through the rules quickly before then. So this one is the startup. This is a startup meeple. So you have the startup team. We got our three workers there. And of course we have the startup logo, kind of a palm wanting some money. And then we have the BPO. This is the BPO meeple. Not double-sided. I love, 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 love screen printed meeples. So I first off, I love meeples. I think meeples add a lot of charm and character to a game. But when they add screen printing to them to give them a little bit of life, I think it's so much more enjoyable. So those are the BPOs. We have three of those. And then this is the BPO logo. And the last one is the market leader. He almost looks like a CIA agent. Does he not like an FBI? Eh, more like a CIA agent. Yeah, that's a CIA agent or a secret service agent. So we have the market leader and their icon is a crown. So let's take a look at the cards because that'll give us a better idea of kind of what we're doing. So right off the bat, first off, we see I have credit cards in here. What are these credit cards? So these are the credit cards. You can see they have a spin dial here. So you can spin it based on the amount of money you might have. So when you're buying things, this is all in millions. Uh, so that's the amount of money you can have. So these are the three different types or four different types of credit cards that are available. If you know, I'd want the black credit card because this means you have money whenever you have the black one, the Inferno Express. And then here is the Bank of Hellas, Hellas, Bank of Hellas. They really should have put a mag strip back here. I mean, that would have been sweet. Just put a, just print some black ink back here. Make it a mag strip. That'd be so cool. So there you go. You even got the chip, the digital chip. So you got your credit cards. But now let's look at take a look at the cards. So as I mentioned, this game is fully symmetrical, which means uh, according to the rule book, you have different setups for each person. Uh, so for example, if I go down here, uh, if we were to look at the green blue team. They get their credit card, whatever that one is, probably the blue one. They get three project tiles. They actually get some of these asymmetrical tiles, three shares of each of their projects, which is miniature, prime, Ethereum, and board tube. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but what that basically means though, is that they have a completely different setup than the other players, which means they are trying to do things completely different as they work their way through this economy of a board game. So here we have the cards. Now, uh, you'll notice the card is labeled based on which faction it is, and then they'll have the ability with the uh, costs and resources available there to do whatever they wanna do. So here is them. So you can see down here is the action. So this is the funding cycle. Select a share you own and sell it for nine million to any player. So you can sell a share to a player. Uh, I wonder if this forces them to have to buy it from you. Exit strategy, select the share you own to auction starting at 1 million. Now the shares, you're obviously selling shares. Down here uh, is where there's going to be, you see how there's a heart thing? Based on how the public perceives your product or uh, uh, design that you're, you're implementing, uh, will make it more valuable. So you, uh, which will also make if it's unloved right now, they're obviously gonna be cheaper to sell or to buy rather. So one of these games is buying low, selling high. You know, you wanna buy potentially the inexpensive uh, projects that aren't uh, really well received and then you have to figure out a way to make the audience or the public uh, at large like your product. So I think that's really cool little mini games that you're playing within this game. So here we have the market leader, same thing. You have these cards here. Now, I thought it was interesting here when I was seeing these cards. These are very much um, cards that you would find like public domain cards. It reminds me a lot of uh, Terraforming Mars, which is fine. I don't, you know, I personally, I don't mind Terraforming Mars' card art. I think it's got a certain charm to it and you get used to it, but I know a lot of people uh, 
you know, make big comments about that. So here is the angel investor cards. You have a bull and bear markets. And uh, yeah, so there you go. These are definitely, most definitely uh, public domain art though. They have to be, they have to be public domain art. So, and then uh, this is the BPO. So yeah, each person plays a little differently as they're going through uh, their, their decisions. We have another set of cards here. These are the event cards. So every round, there's going to be an event that triggers. That's gonna change the market in some way. So here we have gamification and turn order all players add a marketing cube to a project to buy miniature prime at its lowest price. So here you have things that are just gonna be uh, forcing the game to, to move in a certain manner, which is cool. So you've got those cards. So that's the cards. Now, according to the rule book, because this is a prototype rule book, it does say pending uh, social goals so right now, or stretch goals. So right now there's 13 cards, but that can change based on stretch goals and, and how the funding level goes uh, for it. Here are those extra tokens. And here we have, so I believe these are the, the cards that would come down here to the social love thing, or you know, how people are loving their products. So we'd have, uh, let's see here, miniature prime, or board tube, miniature prime, dice coin, Ethereum, card flicks, and market, market book, or meeple book. So let's say Mar meeple book starts getting some hate and card flicks takes it over. So now card flicks is more valuable. Let's say I purchase board tube and then I work a lot to make board tube more valuable. So now my shares that I bought lower are more valuable. So that's kind of the idea of that. Here are some of these secret. These are the secret parameter tokens. Now these are specifically for the startup. No idea what they do because I didn't look specifically what the startup does, but these are those tokens that are directly in reference to this person to kind of give them again, their flavor of play. One of the other things I noted when I took a look at the rule book, and this you know, is gonna be interesting when I do my first impression review, is that the player count, depending, this is a two to four player game, um, depends on, so the amount of players you have depends on the type of people you have to play in the game. So for example, if you're playing like a two player game, it's gotta be like the angel investor versus like the market leader. I'd have to double check uh, what the actual, yeah, here we go, two player game, uh, so it says, uh, Angel, um, in a two-player game, one player take the role of the startup and the other the market leader. So it forces you to play those two hands uh, and then the others, uh, the other uh, players that aren't being played uh, still have an effect on the game, but they're not, being man they're not being handled by the players. These are resource tokens that are gonna be collected. I, again, love that they have um, screen printing on them. It just adds so much more charm and flair to the game. So there's that. And uh, so there's a whole bunch of them, whole baggie of them. And again, we also have these colored cubes. Now, I believe these are gonna need to be sorted uh, into their uh, colored chips. Um, and uh, they're just standard plastic cubes, nothing, nothing too crazy here with these. Um, of course, I get all red ones, look at that. So get some color variety in there. There you go. So that's it. I'm I'm very curious to see how this game will play. Um, how well does it uh, reference the market and the way uh, startup businesses work within Silicon Valley? I used to do a lot of investing back when I worked in the bank, um, and not so much now anymore. Um, yeah, I still have my personal stocks and whatnot that I, I dabble in, but I'm not heavily invested in the market like I used to be when I was part of the financial markets. So that's about it. What do you guys think so far of Disrupt? I'd love to see your thoughts and comments. Let me know in the comment section down below if you are excited for this game, or if you have any questions that I could potentially answer, I can always reach out to the publisher if you guys have any questions on this game. Anyways, my name is Brian. You're watching Game Brigade. Thank you for watching the whole thing. I will talk to you very soon.